Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today I have desk storage for you. This is what it is. Um, it's got everything in it. I'm going to share with you my original prototype as well as this one. So let me take a bunch of these things out. These are heavy. These are very heavy. In particular, there's two pairs of scissors in here, but there's no wibblage at all in here. And that's because I've got a hidden second layer and I'm going to come to that in a minute. Now, when I first thought I need to do something like this, this was my original. And you can kind of see in there that these little tubes, which are all made with the Painted Poppies paper, they look, you know, it was brilliant. I had all of these set up. These will move from one to another absolutely brilliant and then I went and put stuff in and it tipped I don't know if you can see that the whole lot moved over and I thought well that's just rubbish that's not at all what I wanted having made everything and glued it all down and I just thought oh that's annoying so what I've actually got are two layers can you see the second layer in there two layers and I promise you this is easy to make you can see on my prototype, I even tried to glue it down and it was still wibbly. But it was when, I think, I don't remember what I'd put in. I think I'd put bone folders in one and it just, oh, it can't have been that one. I think it was this one. I don't remember. It's all mix and match. I put them in and the whole lot just tipped over and I was just like, oh, well, that would just drive me batty. So that's what not to do. And I'm going to show you on this one what to do. Right. I have just thrown that over my shoulder. So let me scooch that out of the way. But isn't it fun? Isn't that cool? Like I say, they all come out. So if you decided you didn't like the paper anymore or it got a little bit tatty, which you know, it might, that's fair, it might. Or you just fancy to change up. They all come in and out, lift them in and out. Some of them have been glued, closed. That one hasn't, up to you. But I love it and it's really sturdy. Measures six inches that way, four inches that way, and two inches deep, which is 15 centimetres that way, 10 centimetres that way, and five centimetres. And it is solid. Okay. To make the main box, you're going to need three pieces of cardstock, two that are the same size. They are eight by 10 inches, 20 by 25 centimetres, two of those, and another one that's eight by 10 inches, no, six by eight inches, 15 by 20 centimetres. Please don't worry about writing anything down. It's all on my blog. Click open the description bar and you'll see a link there that will take you to this project. Watch the video to learn the how to, not necessarily to be writing down everything. I've done all of the writing for you. Let me scooch everything out of the way. Clear some space, Samantha. Right. On each of the boxes, on all your pieces of cardstock, you're scoring at two inches on all four sides. Five centimetres on all four sides, whether it's the top or the, uh, I lie completely. That's just on the big pieces, two inches on all four sides. I'm rolling my eyes at myself here. So those are your big pieces. These are the eight by ten. Ooh. I'll make that one an inside one two inches on all four sides. This is the smaller one. This is six by eight inches and this one you're going to score at one inch on all four sides. Okay. Hang on to two of them. I'm going to hang on to the one I wibbled and put one to one side. You're also going to need a piece of cardstock that is going to become your template that is six by four inches 10 by 15 centimeters and that will be this measurement here the center part this is my white piece okay and that fits bang in the middle and this is going to become your your template you also need the layering circles dies I'm not going to remake my template because obviously I've made one and choose a bunch of the smaller temp smaller circles. I went with the four smallest, even though I've got six here. And so on your template, 
with your die cutting machine lay it out and go you know what is that going to work is that not going to work so you fit it all on and you make them work okay so you're getting the, pr the principle there so i fitted all of those on this template you need to you need a template because we're going to create two layers for this and that's going to come on here in the middle part so that's all of the prep work done, the cardstock. These are the two that I'm going to start cutting into. There's the larger one and here's the smaller one. We don't need any of these outer corners on either of these two pieces. So just chop those away, remembering that this is the small one and one of the big ones. You don't need to be massively neat. This is actually going to get hidden. These side rectangular panels are going to be tucked inside. You're not going to see these at all. But don't, you know, don't be hacking in like that. But you can be swift if you want. Okay, right. They're in the bin. So I'm coming back in with my template and I've got it facing up. And it will fit just nicely in there. I'm going to grab a pencil. I don't know where the pencil is because I kind of threw everything around my desk. That one will do. Oh, Poodle's top code at UK. That's me. And like I say, this is the inside part of this red cardstock. Technically, Poppy Parade cardstock, not red. So, can you see those? I'm blinding myself with my own ring lights here and exactly the same on here and the reason we've created a template is so that those two layers that are inside this box are a this box that you can't see this one they're above one another I'm hoping you can see that. There we go. Right. So, big shot at the ready. So, I've got magnetic platform, clear plate, and my piece of cardstock. And I've got my four circles. One there. Two. And I'm going to run that through and hope I don't need a shim. So this is the smaller piece. And there's still two more to go through. technicality you could make this with six circles of different sizes I just liked those sizes so pop that to one side we're gonna have a little bit of fun now with this larger piece so again magnetic platform down cutting plate down as you will see it doesn't fit panic not you don't worry right so I'm gonna put the biggest one in And the smallest of my magnets are jumping. 
Don't you just hate it when that happens? Your magnets don't want to play the game. Okay, then just fold it over. It's going to act like a shim. It's also going to be hidden inside. It's okay. this sort of embossing there but like I say it's hidden inside don't worry about it if it if it's there it's there it doesn't matter and then my last two and again just fold it over clear plate on top and run that on through as well. And that's my last ones done. So, so I've got a billion circles. Move that out of the way. But I have my template still intact, so I can use this another day, and these two parts here. We're going to set those aside for a second and I'm going to come to this piece that I scored in the beginning but did nothing with. So I'm going to burnish it. Just looking at the time. Not very long. Not even 12 minutes yet. I would say that the most time consuming part was actually creating the template. Um, and it's not really, but you do have to take a, a moment to think. Is it going to fit? Oh, oh, am I going to get six on there? Right, I'm cutting down the straight of the rectangle and I'm wedging in this square because this is going to be on display and it's the outside of the box. Concentrating when I don't speak. <laughs> right, so that's done. I want to decorate the outside. I've got this beautiful, very large poppy look here, but I've got the slightly smaller one, a bit more watercolory um, sort of look. So um, I didn't write down these at all. These measure one and three quarters by three and three quarters for the ends, and one and three quarters by five and three quarters for there. So in metric, that's going to be four and a half by nine and a half for those ones and four and a half by 14 and a half for those ones. So I'm going to snail those on. Oh, nearly, nearly did the wrong side then. Right, and I'm going to put adhesive on these parts. Love tear and tape. I don't, I, did anybody work out how long I managed to get that last roll to last when I was using it last year? Seemed to go forever, didn't it? I did know a few people went, yeah, you're on a new set, new roll of tear and tape. I know I only have one spare in my drawer though. That makes me panic. How many rolls of, or how many glues do you have? If you're a snail person, how many how many refills do you have? Or if you're a liquid glue, how many spare rolls, of spare tubes of liquid glue do you have? I have lots of all. Okay, this is gonna fold round and meet up there. And just do the same all the way round. So 
together. That's the base of the box. Now, this one, this small one, with the one inch, one inch parts, that's going to go in that way down. And I'm going to try and do this without headbutting the camera. It's a nice snug fit. See, it fits beautifully. This one, you need to make sure that you're lining it up the same way because that's why we created a template. Because if you'd have just gone randomly, it wouldn't necessarily have fitted. So that is also going to fit nice and snugly. And it's gonna go around the outside of the one that we've already put in. It's going to go in really nice and snugly. You might need to get your fingers in. Why is that going to catch you? There we go. And that is completely flush. It's not moving, it's not going anywhere. You can take it out if you want to. If you dislike the fact that it gapes ever so very slightly there, I'll show you what to do. You get your liquid glue. You open it up, oopsie, open it up and feed your glue inside, which hopefully you can see there, and you just hold it closed until it dries. Right, next part, oh, we're at 16 minutes now. I'm just gonna put weight that that way round. Okay, now we're just gonna use up fun and scraps, and I might only just do a couple of these before just for now. So I've got scraps of paper, they are not, well they're, they're, to be fair they're quite big scraps, um, but they're the patterns from this paper pack. So I've got a tall one here, so this is six by six inches, and you just start rolling a tube. Now when you roll a tube and you don't glue it, it's not a very nice shape, it's a bit more overly too overly for me. So a bone folder just on the edges or the ends will work absolutely fine and I'm not very good at doing this opposite corner. But just to get that curl started and throw it around so that when you come to put it together you roll it up, you've got a nice circle, that should be dry now, so you see it's not going to gape there anymore. Decide which one you want to put it in. I'm going to go with that one. And get it pretty much sized. I think you're seeing probably at a better angle than I am, so I've, I've allowed it to pop open, so it won't open anymore. Grabbed that top end. Get it all lined up. This is where liquid, liquid glue is your friend. Tombo and I are not great mates. Little thin part there. Pop it back in to make sure it fits and hold it closed. Oops, I've stuck my fingers to it. <laughs> and that's one that's gonna fit in there. And then you grab another one. Where should I put this one? I don't know. So will this one work in here? Yeah, that will work in there. So again, curl the end. I don't know if I can do it this, with this hand. Yeah, I can apparently. Oh, who knew? there and let it expand. I like to say some of them you don't, you might not want to glue shut, you might want to completely swap them out, but just keep going with your scraps and bits. Here's another one. Um, I fully expect the doorbell to go any second now. Again, just roll it up. 
and you're sizing it at first, let it, oh no, that was too wide for that little thin piece. So that was a good example. You size it up first before you commit and glue it. Let it unroll and expand. Yep, that's a good size. You could almost even, if you really wanted to, you could staple it. Oh, it's okay, he's not ringing the doorbell, he's just dropping. <laughs> he's just dropping the letter through the letter box. In there, I'm just holding that one shut. And because there are the two layers, it's there's no wobble. There's, well, that one, because I glued it at the wrong size, that's probably a better fit for in there. But there's no wobble from them whatsoever. So you can put heavy stuff. <laughs> the fact that it's too heavy. Your tubes are not moving because of the two layers that are in there. They are not moving anywhere. Um, what else can I put in? Put a Tombow glue in that one. Nothing's moving at all. So... I hope you like it. I hope you like the weird and quirky of the project. You can see the two layers when they're open. You can't otherwise. Bone folder in there. Everything. Oh yes, much longer video. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me. Hope to speak to you very soon. Bye.